space travel has always fascinated me, and I'm sure I'm not alone. There are so many unanswered questions regarding the universe, and space travel allows us to obtain some. Join us as we look at 20 space traveling secrets revealed by astronauts. 20. Venus, a scorching mystery. Venus, the second planet from the Sun, is the solar system's hottest and brightest planet. The hot, rocky type of planet is named after the Roman goddess of love and beauty, and it is the only solar system planet named after a female when the astronomy community follows the International Astronomical Union designation of names as a standard. Venus was called after the most attractive deity in the Roman and Greek pantheons because it's shown the brightest of the five planets known to ancient astronomers. Venus, on the other hand, was known as Aphrodite in ancient Greek city-states. Venus depicts a terrible world in the space age. Because spacecrafts do not survive long on Venus's surface, it is extremely difficult to observe it up close. The reason Venus is the hottest planet in the solar system is convoluted. Although Venus is not the nearest planet to the sun, its rich atmosphere traps heat in an out-of-control version of the greenhouse effect that we witness on Earth with global warming. Because they strongly absorb light in the blue and ultraviolet wavelengths, unusual stripes in Venus's higher clouds are nicknamed blue absorbers or ultraviolet absorbers. These are absorbing a massive quantity of energy, approximately half of the total solar energy absorbed by the globe. As a result, they appear to play a significant part in keeping Venus as hellish as it is. 19. Venera 7. Venus was named after the Roman goddess of beauty, but when humanity began sending spacecrafts to the planet next door, experts rapidly discovered that beautiful hurts. After a series of probes were crushed by the strong air pressure before reaching the surface, the Soviet Union ultimately developed a vessel it thought would make it all the way to the surface. Venera 7 was the name of that vessel, and after a perilous journey filled with setback after setback, it not only survived the landing, but also made the first call home from another world's surface. The 1960s could be thought of as a temporal spaceship cemetery. There were numerous mission failures as the U.S. and the USSR fought for dominance in space. On August 17, 1970, Venera 7 launched alongside a second rocket carrying its twin, Cosmos 359. However, that twin did not leave Earth's orbit, so Venera 7 was by itself. The probe successfully entered Venus's atmosphere after a four-month voyage. But the difficult part had only begun. The parachute would have to deploy first, and it did. But there was a tear six minutes later. Venera 7 was unable to break its descent and smashed into the ground at a speed of 17 meters per second. However, the interior padding served its purpose. Venera 7 survived for 23 minutes. 18. Clear pictures by Venera 13. Venera 13 and 14 were identical spacecrafts designed to capitalize on the 1981 Venus launch opportunity. The missions, which launched five days apart, were designed to conduct in-depth research of Venus's atmosphere and surface. This time, the lander lasted 127 minutes in a temperature of 457 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 89 Earth atmospheres. As it flew by Venus, the descent vehicle communicated data to the bus, which served as a data relay. The first color photographs of Venus's surface were returned by Venera 13, which revealed an orange-brown flat bedrock surface covered with loose regolith and small, flat, thin, angular pebbles. 17. Moon Landing In our thumbnail, we can see an astronaut on the left picture and a pyramid which seems to have been built on the moon, as astronauts can be seen approaching the structure. Is this real, or is it science fiction? Why don't you let us know what you think in the comments below? The Luna program was one of the Soviet Union's two lunar exploration initiatives. The first mission was launched in 1959, and the last mission was launched in 1976. The Luna missions were planned to collect data on the Moon and its environment for scientific purposes, as well as to aid in the planning of future lunar missions, including manned missions to the Moon. The missions in the series featured flybys, lunar circling, and soft landings. Although the Luna program had numerous ups and downs, and did not result in a manned journey to the moon, it did accomplish many firsts. The first lunar flyby, the first lunar impact, the first images of the far side, the first soft landing, the first lunar satellite, the first analysis of lunar soil, 
the first sample return, and the first lunar rover deployment were among them. These missions also accomplished remote sensing and photography of the moon, as well as operating two rovers on the lunar surface and returning three sets of lunar samples. 16. First woman on moon. Valentina Tereshkova, a Soviet cosmonaut, was the first woman in space. Tereshkova was launched on a solo mission aboard the Vostok 6 spacecraft on June 16, 1963. She orbited the Earth for more than 70 hours, two years after Yuri Gagarin's first human-crewed space journey. It took another 19 years for Soviet cosmonaut Svetlana Savitskaya to become the second woman in space on board the Soyuz T-7 mission in 1982. Savitskaya returned to space in 1984, becoming the first woman to do it twice, while over 500 people have flown into space. Just 11% of them are women. Most of these women flew in NASA programs, with the remainder in Soviet, Russian, and Chinese space programs. 15. Apollo 11. 14. Humans walked on another world for the first time on July 20, 1969, fulfilling a goal stated by President John F. Kennedy in 1961, before Americans had even orbited the Earth. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin spent more than two hours exploring the region around their lunar landing site, after a landing that included evading a lunar crater and boulder field just before touchdown. They gathered soil and rock samples, conducted tests, planted an American flag, and left behind medals honoring the Apollo 1 crew as well as a plaque that read, We came in peace for all mankind. Apollo 14 was notable for returning America's first astronaut, Alan Shepard, to space, but it was also likely the smoothest lunar landing to that point. The crew spent over nine hours outside the lunar module setting up various experiments. Shepard broke a new distance record by walking over 9,000 feet on the lunar surface while hauling a handcart loaded with tools and samples. 14. Apollo 15, 16, 17. Humans drove an automobile on the moon for the first time on Apollo 15. The first of the Apollo J missions, built for extended stays on the moon, included a lunar rover which Commander David Scott and Lunar Module Pilot James Irwin operated during their 18-hour stay on the surface. The rover drove over 17 miles, putting up experiments and gathering 170 pounds of material. Scott conducted an experiment before leaving the lunar surface to test Galileo's claim that objects in vacuum without air resistance would fall at the same place. He threw a geology hammer and a feather, both of which landed on the ground at the same time, confirming Galileo correct. Commander John Young and Lunar Module Pilot Charles Duke drove more than 16 kilometers over three moonwalks, collecting 209 pounds of samples, taking advantage of having a lunar rover. The voyage was cut short by a day due to problems, but the return trip included a spacewalk by Command Module Pilot Ken Mattingly to recover film from a camera in the service module. Apollo 17, the final Apollo mission, offered the most extended lunar exploration of the program, with three moonwalks lasting more than seven hours each and a three-day stay on the moon. 243 pounds of material were collected by Commander Gene Cernan and Lunar Module Pilot Harrison Schmidt, the first scientist astronaut to reach the moon. As new tools and techniques are created and applied, these samples, as well as those from past missions, continue to reveal more about the moon. 13. Singing Song while Apollo 17 astronauts Eugene Cernan and Harrison Schmidt were walking on the moon, they could be heard singing, I was strolling on the moon one day. This was during the last Apollo lunar landing mission in December 1972. I didn't know walking on the moon could be so much fun. 12. Penetrometer. In preparation for spaceship landings, the lunar penetrometer was a spherical electronic probe that tested the load-bearing qualities of the moon. NASA intended it to be dropped onto the surface from an above vehicle and send data to the spacecraft. In the video, Charlie drives the penetrometer into the Earth and falls forward to the ground, leaning down on it as it drops. He gets back up three times by executing press-ups to a kneeling position before standing. For two seconds in the middle of his second press-up, he supports his entire body on his hands, fully off the ground. The South Ray Crater ejecta blanket is visible in the backdrop as a ribbon of white soil. 11. Flight of Saturn V Rocket NASA designed the Saturn V rocket to send people to the moon. When it was employed in the Apollo program in the 1960s and 1970s, it was the most powerful rocket ever successfully flown. It was also used to launch the Skylab space station. The Saturn V rocket stood 363 feet tall, equivalent to a 36-story structure 
and 60 feet taller than the Statue of Liberty. The Saturn V weighed 6.2 million pounds when fully fueled for liftoff, almost the weight of 400 elephants. At launch, the rocket produced 34.5 million newtons of thrust, enough to power 85 Hoover dams. With the quantity of gasoline consumed for the Saturn V's moon landing mission, a car that gets 30 miles per gallon could travel around the planet 800 times. Apollo 12, 14, 15, 16, and 17 astronauts were also able to land on the moon thanks to Saturn V rockets. The Saturn V took the crew into space on Apollo 13, but a glitch prevented them from landing on the moon. This was not a difficulty with the Saturn V, but with the Apollo spacecraft. 10. Russian Space Program On April 12, 1961, Soviet cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin became the first human to journey beyond Earth's atmosphere into space. The achievement shook the world, not only sending the United States scurrying to even the score, but also opening the door to the plethora of possibilities that human space exploration could open. Despite never sending a cosmonaut beyond low Earth orbit, the former Soviet Union and Russian Federation have a long history of human space exploration, including the forthcoming Artemis missions. The Soviet Union was responsible for launching the first human into space, performing the first spacewalk, sending the first woman into space, and assembling the first modular space station in orbit around Earth, all while using the same space capsule that was used in the 1960s. 9. Mars Mission Challenges and Triumphs Many people are unaware that the Soviet Union was the first nation on the planet to land a spacecraft on Mars in 1971. NASA recently discovered declassified evidence of this landing, which had been kept secret from the public for a long time. Mars 3 was a Soviet Mars program robotic space probe that launched on May 28, 1971, nine days after its twin spacecraft Mars 2. The 4MV orbiter's primary mission was to examine the topography of the Martian surface, evaluate its soil composition, measure various atmospheric variables, and monitor solar radiation, the solar wind, and the interplanetary and Martian magnetic fields. Furthermore, it functioned as a communications relay to send signals from the lander to Earth. 8. The Birth of Rovers Before Curiosity, before Opportunity, before Spirit, and before Sojourner, this little guy was the first to land on Mars in December 1971. The Prop M rover was part of the Soviet Union's Mars 3 project, which aimed to land the first mobile scientific instruments on Mars. Prop M stands for Device Evaluation Terrain. Mars. The abbreviation appears to operate solely in Russian. The robot weighed 4.5 kilograms and measured 215 by 160 by 60 millimeters, making it somewhat smaller than a breadbox. It was outfitted with a dynamic penetrometer and a radiation densitometer to assess soil density, and it was connected to the Mars 3 lander by a power and data cable. Once on the ground, the rover moved using two revolving skis or skids. It was self-contained and detected impediments using two simple impact bars on the front. If it collided with something, it would back up and turn. The rover was scheduled to stop every 1.5 meters and take a measurement, with a maximum range of 15 meters. The plan was for the rover to roam around in front of the lander, visible to the Mars 3 cameras, and report back measurements. Unfortunately, Prop M was never given the opportunity to go exploring. On December 2, 1971, the Mars 3 lander detached from its spacecraft and entered the Martian atmosphere. It's possible that the lander was destroyed during its descent by a big dust storm that was raging on Mars at the time, but it's also plausible that the problem was with the orbiter. There's also the angry Martians theory. We'll never know what happened, at least not until one of the current rovers visits the Mars 3 landing site to investigate. 7. Cutting Edge Instrument The Mars 2020 Perseverance rover mission is part of NASA's Mars Exploration Program, a long-term effort to explore the Red Planet with robotics. The mission covers high-priority Mars exploration research goals, including crucial questions about the possibility of life on Mars. The Perseverance rover pioneers a drill capable of collecting core samples of the most promising rocks and soils and storing them in a cache on Mars's surface. These samples could be returned to Earth by a future mission. One of the rover's discoveries has been volcanic rock. Hundreds of experts scouring the data given back by Perseverance now have some ideas about how the crater grew over time. The Perseverance rover's Mars samples will now arrive on Earth in 2033 at the earliest. In addition, the sample return mission now contains two Mars landers rather than one. 6. The Quest of Martian Life 
Mars has become a popular destination. In 2021, China and the United States placed rovers on Mars, while the United Arab Emirates became the first Arab country to place a probe in the planet's orbit. NASA, the European Space Agency, India and Japan all have forthcoming plans, and the following decades will see ambitious attempts to gather samples and even place human boots on the ground. To date, no evidence of past or contemporary life on Mars has been discovered. The accumulation of evidence implies that the surface environment of Mars contained liquid water during the ancient Noachian period and may have been habitable for microorganisms. But livable conditions do not always signify life. Because of these similarities, many scientists believe Mars and Earth are twins. However, they are not identical. Some obstacles would have to be addressed before humans could begin to call Mars home. 5. Studying Mars Phobos is the largest and innermost of Mars's two natural satellites, the other being Deimos. Asaf Hall, an American astronomer, discovered the two moons in 1877. The Phobos project included a spacecraft that would orbit Phobos and its environment, a lander that would investigate it in situ, and a return module that would transport around 100 cubic centimeters of samples from the enigmatic moon back to Earth. A few of these explorers are currently in orbit or on the surface of Mars. However, Mars's two moons, Phobos and Deimos, have received little attention. So far, Mars orbiting spacecrafts have explored the two moons remotely. They have also been seen momentarily during close flybys, revealing various interesting traits. For the present time, there is no credible explanation for the composition and genesis of the Martian moons. 4. Soyuz Mission Cosmonaut Soyuz is a spacecraft series that has been in service since the 1960s with over 140 flights. The Korolev Design Bureau, which is now Energia, created it for the Soviet space program. It is launched from Kazakhstan's Baikonur Cosmodrome on a Soyuz rocket. Between the retirement of the space shuttle in 2011 and the 2020 demo flight of SpaceX Crew Dragon, the Soyuz was the sole way to transfer crew to and from the International Space Station. Even though China launched crewed Shenzhou flights during this time period, none of them docked with the ISS. 3. Sputnik 1 and Sputnik 2 First Animal on Space On November 3, 1957, little than a month after launching Sputnik 1, the Soviet Union took the next important step by launching Sputnik 2. Sputnik 2 rushed to capitalize on the first satellite's propaganda used an animal enclosure and transported the dog Laika, the first animal to orbit the Earth. The experience inspired the United States to organize its space program. Future Manned Spacecraft Center, director Robert Gilruth told historians that when he watched the dog fly up, he knew it was time to get started since it was going to be a serious program to put a man in space. Sputnik 2 weighed 508 kilograms, which was substantially more than its simpler predecessor and was still linked to its booster rocket after reaching orbit. No plans were made to recover Laika due to a lack of development time. The environmental control system had not been built for a long mission. On November 10th, the satellite's batteries died, and data from the science investigations stopped to be received. On April 14, 1958, Sputnik 2 exploded upon re-entry. It would be nearly three years before the Soviet Union orbited another animal, this time safely returning the complete crew to Earth. 2. Sputnik 3 Sputnik 3 was a Soviet satellite launched from Baikonur Cosmodrome on May 15, 1958, by a modified R7SS6 ICBM. The scientific satellite was equipped with a diverse set of instruments for geophysical study in the upper atmosphere and near space. The only Soviet spacecraft launched in 1958 was Sputnik 3. Sputnik 3, like its American counterpart, Vanguard 1, was launched into orbit during the International Geophysical Year. Sputnik 3 weighed roughly 100 times as much as the heaviest of the three active American spacecraft and outperformed their combined scientific data capabilities. It was conical in shape, 11.7 feet long and 5.68 feet wide at the base. Sputnik 3 re-entered the atmosphere and burned up on April 6, 1960, it was fueled by silver zinc batteries and silicon solar cells and ran for around six weeks. 1. Space Cooperation Agreement Collaboration in space between the United States and the Soviet Union remained low during the 1960s, with the relationship characterized more by competition than cooperation. In the early 1970s, during a period of détente, the two countries initiated discussions to build a shared docking system. On May 24, 1972, during their summit conference in Moscow, President Richard M. Nixon and Premier Alexei N. Kosygin of the United States and the Soviet Union signed an agreement on space cooperation, laying the framework for the Apollo-Soyuz test project, the first international human spaceflight, which took place in July 1975. 
I was not aware that so many spacecrafts had been sent on Venus and Mars. But after seeing these videos, I am. Which one was your favorite? Why don't you let us know in the comments below? Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give us a like and let us know in the comments what you think. Check out our other videos and subscribe to be part of the fun. Click on the notification icon so you can see our new videos as soon as they're uploaded. Thank you for watching and see you next time.